Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name's Justin. Today we're covering the DM8 drum set. No, not that one from Alesis. This is from a company called Nuex. They're a little bit lesser known, but they've been making electronic drums for a surprising amount of time. They've slowly built up to better and better drum sets, and this is currently their flagship at about $1,400. You might also recognize Nuex drum sets under the Cat Percussion brand name because they make their drums for them as well. But this is the first time I've ever sat down and played a Nuex drum set just with their Nuex badge. And this is their latest highest end electronic drum set that they currently sell. And so I wanted to share my thoughts on what I liked and didn't like about this set. Also, how it compares against other drums around this price from Roland, from Two Box, from Yamaha, and of course, Alesis. But first, today's video is brought to you by eDrumCenter.com. They actually let me film in their store for a whole day, and this is one of the drum sets that I filmed while I was there. So big shout out to them for making this video possible. They've also got a discount link in the description of this video. Go click on that to save some money on anything electronic drum related. Go check out their store today. Okay, so let's start off with the sizes of the drums. So you get a 12 inch snare drum, three 10 inch tom pads, a 10 inch kick drum pad, a 12 inch hi-hat cymbal, two 12 inch crash cymbals, and a 14 inch ride cymbal. Now, when it comes to the hardware, of course you get the drum rack, but you also get a free snare drum stand, a free hi-hat stand, a free kick drum pedal, and some free drum sticks that will probably snap in half in about a week because they're very, very lightweight. The mesh heads on the snare drum, the toms, and the kick drum are all two ply, and they're made by Remo, so they feel very similar to Roland mesh heads. All of these tom pads kind of look like Roland PDX 100 pads, but they're actually a little bit different on the inside. So if you take off the drum head, all the toms have an offset trigger design. This is the only company that I'm aware of that uses a stacked set of foam rings instead of a foam cone or a foam rod. So there's no hot spotting in the middle, just a hot spot near the edge towards you as you play. Now moving over to the snare drum, this gives you two additional head piezos in a triangle configuration, just like uh, what's been popular recently with ATV F note, Roland, and Yamaha. This, in theory, will remove hot spotting because you spread out the head triggers in a triangle formation. But the weird thing is, this trick isn't working out for them because there is a hot spot in the middle of this pad, somehow, some way. The ride symbol is a one cable configuration, so you cannot upgrade this later on to like a Roland or F note or ATV ride symbol that uses two cables for bell bow and bell edge. So just be aware of that. I was told by eDrum Center, they did test out a VH10 hi-hat with this drum set and it did technically work. So if you ever want to upgrade the hi-hat, it is possible to do so. When it comes to overall noise level, the cymbals and the kick drum are surprisingly quiet, and the tom pads and the snare drum are a little bit louder on average, so the entire drum set volume just ends up evening out. Now when it comes to the free accessories in the box, like the free hi-hat stand, the free snare drum stand, the free kick drum pedal, and the free sticks, the hi-hat stand is fine, it does the job. The snare drum stand, if you're really tall like me, it could be something you wanna upgrade a little bit later on down the line. And same thing goes with the kick drum pedal. It's definitely like, you know, something that you would buy on Amazon for 50 bucks. Now, when it comes to the drum rack, it is surprisingly large for a kit of this price. Sometimes they can be a little bit cramped and a little bit compact on drum sets that are under $2,000. But this one, I feel like is the correct size for the pads that it comes with. And the boom arms do have rotation stoppers. I checked on that, so that's good to see. Now on the bottom of the drum rack, there's actually a second bar, which I guess theoretically would stop your kick drum pad from moving if it bumped into that. Uh, but I guess it's there for extra stability. Okay, so wrapping up this section, before we move ahead and talk about the drum module, I do like the drums, the cymbals, and the hardware that this comes with. I think they made some good choices here. It's fairly large, but it doesn't feel cheap. And that's the important balance that you need to strike. I feel like the pad and hardware set are the main strength of this drum set. So now let's move ahead and talk about the drum module. The front of the module is actually a piece of metal. I think it's like stainless steel. 
It has a color screen. It's kind of taking the TD25 uh, kit wheel from that module. It comes with a ton of effects. So you got your pad EQ, your pad compression, your master EQ, your master compression, overdrive, you've got your reverb. It's got pretty much all the stuff that you would want to adjust your sound. The only really annoying thing about the interface is that it doesn't auto save your changes. So if you mess with stuff like hi-hat settings or pad settings or sound settings, it won't remember any of that unless you first go to the settings, go press this unlock button, and then go make your changes. And then after you play for half an hour, you have to remember in the back of your head to go back to settings and press the lock button so that when you power off the module, it remembers what you did. Port selection on the back isn't too shabby for the price range. You've got your five pin MIDI, you've got two extra trigger inputs to give you an extra tom and an extra crash or whatever combination of the two. You've got your mix input, you've got your headphone jack, and you also have uh, connections for USB. One USB is for connecting a thumb drive. You can bring in your own samples if you want. And there's also another USB connection, the kind that you would use to connect over to your laptop. Surprisingly, this can do 14 tracks of audio over USB. You don't need an audio interface, just you know, one USB connection, 14 tracks of audio. You can also, of course, decide to send MIDI over USB, and I did try this with Superior Drummer 3, and I got it working. But I was only spending like a little bit of time on this, so I didn't get the mapping completely done perfectly. The closest thing that I found was like a Millennium preset, but maybe there's other ones that I glossed over and didn't try. So next up, let's talk about the sound quality. I usually say things like sound quality is subjective. It depends on you. Just decide for yourself if you like the sounds or don't like them. But in this case, I feel like it's pretty clear cut that the competition is way out in the lead. Whether or not that's a two box kit on the Speedlight, the DTX Pro from Yamaha, or the Roland TD-07, they all have better sounds built in. And not only better sounds, but more nuance to the sounds. For example, if you take a look at the hi-hat, you just read the manual or even look in the hi-hat menu, you'll see that there's only three states of open and closed. Now you can make the drum set sound okay in short little bursts, and maybe it sounds okay with music, I don't know. But in general, the drum set just really lags behind in this area. Okay, so now let's talk about overall competition. If you're spending roughly $1,400, here are the drum sets that will show up on different websites. The first is the Yamaha DTX-6K2X. Obviously, while this module is great and the symbols aren't half bad, I would have to just forget about this one. It's just, you don't want to buy a drum set with rubber toms at this price range. That's ridiculous. The next drum set is the two box Speedlight drum set, which I've heard good things about, and I have tested out the module, but I haven't tested out the module with these pads. So while I've heard good things, I can't confirm whether or not this is a good buy or not, but overall it seems to be a decent option with a hi-hat on a stand and a nice, uh, nicely sized ride symbol over here. The next option is the Alesis DM10 MK2 Pro. This drum set is a little bit larger as a whole because it gives you two floor toms instead of one, and they're also 12 inches across. The crashes and the ride, I believe, are also a tad larger as well. On the downside, you don't get a hi-hat on a stand, it's a pedal configuration. Sound quality of the new extra module and this one, I think they're roughly on par. Neither of them are very impressive. And then finally, you have the Roland TD-07 KVX, which as of today is $1,200. You'll notice that it has one less crash symbol. So by the time you spend 200 bucks to buy a second crash, then it will be about the same pricing as the new X drum set. Of the drum sets that I've tried at this price range, I do think the TD-17 is the most balanced, it's the most strong drum set of the bunch, but if you want a really large electronic drum set at 1400, this may not be the one for you. Okay, so the question is, is this drum set worth buying? I feel like I'm not really that excited. I don't love it, I don't hate it. It's just another option out there if you're spending roughly $1,400. But some people may find that this is the perfect one that suits them. It just depends on what you want the drum set to do and what downsides you're okay with. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.